Hi, welcome back. So in our last video, uh, we talked about getting one of the STL files into our OpenFOAM folder, our Linux. So we have that uh, open in ParaView already, what this uh, cylinder actually looks like. And remember, when OpenFOAM looks at these numbers, it's going to interpret them as meters. Oops, zoom in too close. So this is basically, a, if you put this into open form, it is a one meter diameter pipe that is 40 meters long in the Z in axis. So where does the, where does the uh, X and Y axis, uh, where is the center of that? Take a look, we'll zoom out slowly. Yeah, okay. So the cylinder is centered on the x and y axis, so directly in the center, and it goes from minus 0 0.5 to or minus 0 0.4. I can't, yeah, there about minus 0 0.5 or 0 0.4, top to bottom, minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5, and minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. That's the x and y, if I'm not wrong. So if not, we can take a look at this file and. Yeah, so you look at this is one, well, one unit in the x direction, one unit in the y direction. So that is what we have. And the z axis, it ranges from 0 to 40. So that should make our block mesh, uh, our block mesh pretty easy to generate. So, uh, yeah, all the stuff we learned about block mesh is not going to be put to waste because we still need to make a very simple block mesh so I'm going to get the block mesh up so again we have these vertices okay and then all right so first thing first we want to change the scale from 0 0.1 to 1.0 okay so what is this 1.0 and 0 0.1 well, this means it's 1.0 times 1 meter. If it's 0 0.1, then it's uh, 10 cm. Yeah, 10 centimeters. So what does it mean there? Well, if you look at these coordinates here, just a refresher for you. You look at these coordinates here. Um, all these will be in, uh, if the scale is 1, this will be 1 meter in the x direction, 0 in the y, zero in the Z. Likewise, one meter in the X, one meter in the Y, 0 0.1 in the Z. Of course, um, our, our bounds are not going to be that small this time because we're going to have a 40 meter long pipe. So we'll need to change our X and Y bounds, right? The maximum and minimum X and Y values, all right? So I'm going to look at this. Remember we have a, a cylinder that starts from z equals 0 to z equals to 40. So we'll need to do that. z equals to 0. Okay. So we'll want, remember I was talking about having a, having a bigger, bigger cylinder, so to speak here. A bigger block so that you can cut you can cut all this, uh, you can cut the cylinder out of it, right? So, all right. So this is what the cylinder looks like. So you need to make sure the block is somewhat slightly bigger than this, uh, this uh, cylinder. It has to encase the entire cylinder, in other words. So how do we make it encase the entire cylinder? Well, um, so since it starts from z equals zero, we might want to make it go. We want we want to make the bound start maybe at zero uh, minus one, for example. So we want to make the bound go from minus one to maybe forty one. All right. So here will be just forty one point zero. That will be the block outside. Okay, for a 1.0. Okay, so I'm going to save it by using escape colon w. And then 
what's your x and y bound x and y bound is maybe um, minus 0 0.6 and 0 0.6 right but for simplicity's sake I'm just going to change all these zeros to minus 1 because that will definitely bound the cylinder that will definitely be bigger than the cylinder right right so that's the y coordinates done so remember our cylinder looks like this looks like this so right we want oh yeah we want uh, we want it going from maybe minus 1 to 1 and likewise minus 1 to 1 so the whole thing will whole cylinder will be bounded and encased by this uh, big block that we are talking about here so I'm just going to put minus 1 in each of these zeros okay and we'll stop there okay so um, that's what our that's what our system should look like okay so again we'll have uh, the blocks which are stipulated in this kind of a direction okay so how is it supposed to go well we have to remember how our block mesh is written uh, so let's go and so we have our uh, standard block mesh okay so over here so it will go from the least x y and z you increase the x you increase the y then you subtract the x so least x y z increase x increase y subtract x so this should be okay in a 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 kind of a thing so okay so you should go from 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 okay so I'm going to escape and press right which is to save so then the other part is to increase y increase x increase y uh, increase z first and after you go from uh, point 0.3 to point 0.4 you increase your y coordinate then you increase your increase your x coordinate increase your y coordinate and then decrease your y coordinate so increase that from 3 to 4 so from 0 to 4 is an increase in z increase x increase y decrease x so okay 1 2 you see uh, it will be from the max y uh, max z coordinate you increase x increase y decrease x so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 and how do we want to have uh, our mesh size well how many in the x direction well, let's just give it uh, 100 maybe 100 in the y direction maybe 500 in the z direction okay I'm just arbitrarily specifying it but the final you make the mesh I mean sometimes it may take longer for the block mesh to do but it also means that the the mesh size used for the final uh, simulation is going to be finer as well um, it's up to you to specify all right so what are these boundaries um, okay so we have things like this the moving wall okay uh, so all of these should be the type should be patch Okay, because we are not actually having any kind of walls there it's just a generic patch kind of boundary condition so again patch and then we have a merge patch pairs and then we are done we should be done here so write and quit WQ and there you go um, that should be able to give us the block mesh that we need so all right i'm going to run block mesh okay
Okay, looks like they're done. Let's look at how many cells there are. See the bounding box is here. This is the min x and x y z. This is the max x y and z. All right, so we have lots of points there. It took a very long time because we were uh, making a very fine block. So we want to touch uh, what is that snappy pipe dot foam. Then so we can see the we can actually see the. Uh, what am I talking about? Yeah, we can actually see the uh, end result of what this uh, block is like and whether it encases our uh, cylinder. Okay, so this is the cylinder. Alright, it's doing its uh, cylinder thing. Uh, it's just being a cylinder. It's nothing too special about that. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to open form files and I'm going to look for snappy pipe. Look for snappy pipe dot foam. Well, snappy pipe dot foam is here, and this should be able to cover. Okay, it's gonna take a while. Perhaps because we inserted too many cells. But that's okay. You can see there is a nice block here that we can visualize perhaps using a wireframe. And of course, it may take long. All right, you can see the wireframe is very fine, but it is encasing the pipe entirely. And this is what the this is what the uh, block should actually look like. All right, it should encase the entire wireframe very nicely. Okay. Of course, we can make it a a little uh, less fine this mesh. There's no problem with that. In fact, you may make a, you may make the simulation slightly faster. So, yep, Let, let's do less fine. Maybe you put twin, twenty by twenty, and then by a hundred. Okay, so we're gonna run block mesh again. So it's a lot faster this time. I'm going to delete the old one. Snappy pipe dot foam is going to reacquire the data, and let's use a wireframe. So see, there's a lot uh, coarse mesh, but it's able to encompass everything here. So thanks for watching. So this is just a video telling you how to make a block mesh that will encompass the entire STL file, so that we can start carving the shape out using Snappy hex mesh. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.